As we continue to focus on health, let's take a look at health equity and the ways that statistics can help us better assess and understand the challenges that lead to poorer health outcomes. Here at JSM, Maricela Cruz and Yates Coley will be presenting a paper on this very important topic. Thank you both so much for joining us. Thanks Thank you. for having us. So you're going to be talking um, in your session about how structural racism can impact clinical prediction models. Tell me a little bit about how this work got started and why it's so important. There are prominent examples of prediction models that are disproportionately directing resources to privileged groups of people and ignoring um, underserved populations, thereby increasing or widening the gaps between these two groups in terms of healthcare access and health outcomes. Because of this, there's a lot of concern about the potential of clinical prediction models um, and really other artificial intelligence tools um, that are trained on observational data like electronic health records data to make the health disparities in the data worse, and we share that concern. Yeah, and we're particularly concerned about prediction models for suicide risk and self-harm. Some of our prior analysis found the potential for differences in performance of suicide prediction models across different racial and ethnic groups. And then we're worried that using those models with those differences could lead to wider gaps in access to um, mental health care that's affordable, evidence-based, and effective. So we wanted to dig into the potential for structural racism to impact suicide prediction models a bit deeper so we could understand possible bias mitigation strategies and inform decision making about whether and how to use these models in clinical practice. Really important work. Um, let's start with just a, a basic question. How are you defining structural racism in your line of work? Well, here we're thinking about structural racism as structural barriers that limit folks' access to evidence-based quality mental health care. So for example, we know that black patients are less likely than white non-Hispanic patients to initiate psychotherapy or antidepressant treatment after an initial depression diagnosis. So this is driven by structural racism and the longstanding barriers that black people face when trying to access mental health care. And we also know that even racial differences in preferences about types of treatment are also driven by this legacy of mistreatment when trying to seek mental health care. Talk about some of the challenges that you're seeing and how you're overcoming those. Yeah, so some of the challenges in identifying structural racism in clinical prediction models really lies in what we can actually observe in the data. Structural racism is difficult to see in electronic health records data because really what we observe is like high level details of the um, care that's delivered. Um, and a lot of what we observe um, is based around money and billing since electronic health records data were created with that in mind. So because of this, it's very difficult to determine if someone didn't was denied care because of structural racism or a structural barrier, or if really um, they didn't need that care at all. Talk a little bit about the approach you took with these models. Yeah, so here we conceptualized the impact that structural racism in mental health care um, has and how it's reflected in our electronic health record data using kind of common statistical tools that we're familiar with. So we think about structural racism as causing missing data, outcome misclassification, predictor misclassification, risk modification, interactions in our data set. So this way we're able to approach a really complex problem like structural racism using statistical tools that we're familiar with. How have you brought this together into a simulation framework and how effective has that been? To bring this together into, simula into a simulation framework, we have started with mental health data from white and Hispanic people and then randomly created two groups. One group representing a privileged group of people or a population and another um, representing a disenfranchised population. We then actively create changes uh, to try to emulate a structural barrier um, for the disenfranchised group so that we can see the impact of this barrier on model performance. Yeah, and so far we've been successful in generating data that reflects singular um, or individual structural barriers to care, but ultimately we wanna expand our data generating mechanism so that we can reflect multiple um, co-occurring types of structural uh, barriers to care because that better reflects what happens in real life. Patients of color aren't experiencing social uh, structural racism instances in isolation, but rather many things are occurring at once and that's creating the current system we have where there are worse health outcomes for people of color. Thank you both so much for your time. Appreciate it. Of course.